Welcome. I'd really appreciate if you could drop a comment with your thoughts and reactions as you listen. Your feedback helps me craft better stories for you. The blizzard had been raging outside for hours, blanketing the remote town of Willow Creek under a thick layer of snow. Inside the cozy living room of Alex's house, the fireplace crackled warmly as four friends huddled around Alex's laptop, enthralled by the live stream playing on the screen. I can't believe how many people are watching this, said Sam in a hushed tone, glancing at the viewer count in the top corner, which had climbed into the thousands. Her breath formed clouds in the chill air. It's the anonymity, replied Jordan, his eyes glued to the stream. No one knows who's behind it. That mystery alone draws people in. On screen, the enigmatic host known only as Truth Seeker was recounting a disturbing account from a supposed whistleblower. Graphic found footage accompanied the monologue, showing scenes the group wished they could unsee. Tyler shifted uncomfortably. This stuff is really messed up. Are we sure this person is legit and not just some creep with a snuff film collection? Alex shrugged, equally unsettled but unwilling to stop watching. Who knows? But there's definitely an audience for this kind of thing if the numbers are anything to go by. He had discovered the Truth Seeker streams by chance, one bored night, following a deep web rabbit hole out of curiosity more than anything else. At first, it was merely an entertaining diversion during their winter break from college. But the exposes had grown darker, touching on taboo and criminal acts that most would prefer remain hidden. Alex found himself both repulsed yet unable to look away from the train wreck unfolding before his eyes. The others had joined in the subsequent viewings, drawn in by the voyeuristic thrill of uncovering society's deepest, darkest secrets. Only Sam seemed to share Tyler's discomfort at where this was heading. As the stream drew to a close, the truth seekers signed off with their usual cryptic message. The truth lies deeper than you know. Stay tuned for what's yet to surface. The friends sat in silence for a moment, processing what they had just witnessed. Then, Jordan spoke up with a grin. Well, that was another mind. Blowing episode. Who's up for diving back into the rabbit hole to uncover more about this guy? I don't know, said Sam hesitantly. Should we really be encouraging someone who's leaking private information without consent? Oh, come on. Where's your sense of adventure? Jordan nudged her playfully. With your smarts, you could probably uncover his identity before the authorities. Think of the bragging rights. Sam shot him an unimpressed look, but didn't argue further. As the group began discussing theories about the truth seeker, Alex noticed the live chat was still active. Scanning the comments, he paused in surprise. Guys, look at this. Someone in the chat, just name, dropped Willow Creek. He pointed to a comment that read, Truth Seeker, I hear even your small town of Willow Creek has its share of buried secrets. Care to uncover more? The others gathered around, exchanging uneasy glances. It was no secret that their isolated community had its fair share of unsolved mysteries and rumors of illicit activities over the decades. Before any of them could comment further, another message appeared in response. You may be right. Perhaps it's time I shone some light on those long-hidden truths as well. Thanks for giving me something new to dig into. It was signed with the Truth Seeker's username, sending a chill through the room. Jordan was the first to break the tense silence. Well, looks like our friend has set their sights on Willow Creek things are about to get interesting. As the blizzard raged on outside, cutting them off from the rest of the world, the four friends found themselves drawn deeper into the enigmatic world of the truth seeker, despite their growing unease. Little did they know the dangerous game they were about to come embroiled in that winter night. The howling wind shook the windows as Alex stirred awake the next morning. He rubbed his eyes, momentarily disoriented in the dim room, lit only by flickering candles. The power was still out from the blizzard, 
his friends were sprawled asleep on the couches and floor around the dying embers of the fireplace. As Alex checked his phone, he saw it was nearly noon. No service either. He nudged the others awake, and they began preparing a meager breakfast with their dwindling supplies. Any word when the roads might clear? asked Tyler groggily. Radio said another day or two, replied Sam. Just then, Jordan's laptop pinged with a notification. It's starting, he said excitedly, waking it from sleep mode. The others gathered around as the Truth Seekers live stream loaded. This time, their hidden lair was visible, a dim basement room strewn with monitors and documents. Greetings, viewers. The digitized voice spoke. As promised, tonight I shine a light on the secrets of Willow Creek. But first, a message for my new friends, watching from there. The camera panned to a printed screenshot of their chat comments. Alex felt a chill as the truth seeker addressed them directly. I see you've taken an interest in my work. But be warned, some truths are best left buried. You may come to regret following me down this rabbit hole. An ominous tone hung in the air as the broadcast continued. Graphic crime scene photos from the 60s flashed by, depicting mutilated bodies discovered in the woods. These unsolved murders have haunted Willow Creek for decades. But I've discovered the killer was closer than anyone suspected. More images appeared. This time, yearbook photos from their high school. A familiar face stared back that none of them recognized. Your neighbor, your teacher, even the town mayor helped cover it up. Such hypocrisy beneath the surface of an ideal small town. The Truth Seeker's monologue dragged ugly skeletons from Willow Creek's closet with disturbing ease. By the time the stream ended, the friends sat in stunned silence. No way this is real, said Tyler shakily. But Sam was scrolling through old newspaper archives, finding disturbing parallels. It's all right here if you know where to look. This person has clearly been researching Willow Creek for a long time. Jordan rubbed his hands eagerly. All the more reason to dig deeper ourselves. With the right tools, we could uncover who's really behind this. But Alex remained uneasy as he stared out the window at the swirling snow. Guys, I'm not sure poking around is such a good idea anymore. The days dragged on as the blizzard kept them isolated in Alex's house. With each new live stream, the truth seeker peeled back another layer of Willow Creek's murky past. Jordan delved deeper into the dark web, determined to identify their anonymous host. But the deeper he went, the more questions arose with few answers. Paranoia set in as even mundane details from their lives were dissected and scrutinized on air the truth seeker seemed to know too much about each of them. Sam and Alex grew worried for Jordan's mental state as he obsessively scoured the depths of the internet for clues. Only brief snatches of sleep offered respite from his manic searching. Tyler retreated inward, barely speaking as he listened to music to drown out the disturbing revelations. Dark circles formed under his eyes. One evening, Jordan burst into the living room breathlessly. Guys, I think I found something. Footage from an old security camera. It shows a figure breaking into the high school on Halloween 10 years ago. He played the grainy video, rewinding and enhancing the pixelated image. A hooded figure was visible, smashing the principal's computer before fleeing into the night. That's the same hoodie, Jordan said in a hushed tone. We all had that team hoodie in school. What if? What if it's someone we know? Alex and Sam exchanged a worried look. Jordan, I think you need to take a break. This is sending you down a dangerous path of speculation. But Jordan was beyond reason, his mind spiraling into wild theories. What if the truth seeker has been watching us all this time, learning our secrets to use against us? We have to fight back uncover their identity before they expose another so-called truth about one of us. His eyes were bloodshot and frenzied. No, enough is enough, 
said Alex firmly. We're stopping this now before anyone else loses their grip on reality. He moved to shut Jordan's laptop. Jordan lunged at him with a snarl. This is bigger than you understand. We're so close to the answers. Sam screamed as the two boys struggled, tumbling into the fireplace. Sparks flew as hot ashes scattered across the rug. Tyler sat frozen, watching the chaos unfold with a hollow expression. In that moment, the fragile bonds of trust and sanity holding them together began to unravel. The fight was only the beginning. The storm outside matched the tempest raging within the house. Jordan had locked himself in an upstairs bedroom, refusing to come out as his muffled shouts echoed down the hall. Alex paced the living room restlessly, while Sam applied ointment to his burns with shaking hands. Tyler sat motionless, staring into space. A ping from Jordan's laptop broke the tense silence. Another live stream was starting. Against their better judgment, they gathered around the screen, the Truth Seeker's lair appeared in its usual dim lighting. But this broadcast had a different tone, one of gleeful taunting rather than ominous exposition. It seems the game has taken an interesting turn in Willow Creek, the digitized voice chuckled. The walls are closing in on some unsuspecting players. Footage began rolling of Alex's house, panning across the snow-covered exterior in crisp detail. The friends gasped as drone shots zoomed in on their silhouettes in each room. Your friend has such passion for the truth. Pity his methods will drive him to ruin. The truth seeker mused sadistically. Perhaps a push over the edge is needed to break him. No. Please leave him alone, Sam cried, tears streaming down her face, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. The broadcast cut to Jordan, thrashing around his room wildly while screaming obscenities. His eyes were bloodshot and crazed behind the laptop camera trained on him. The truth seeker's chilling laughter echoed as Jordan smashed furniture in a deranged frenzy. With a howl of rage, he plunged out the window into the blizzard. Sam screamed and bolted up the stairs, the others right behind her. But the bedroom was empty the shattered window gaping into the whiteout. Jordan was gone. They searched the house in a panic, finding no sign of their missing friend. Returning downstairs in despair, another surprise awaited them. The live stream was still rolling, but the camera panned to reveal Tyler catatonic in an armchair. His dead eyes stared blankly ahead as the truth seeker's voice cooed. One down, two to go. Alex and Sam backed away in horror. This psychopath had somehow gotten inside without them knowing. They were no longer watching a broadcast. They had become part of the show. And they were not safe anywhere. The blizzard had trapped them in a nightmare. Alex and Sam huddled together, trembling as they scanned for any sign of the intruder. But the house was eerily still and empty. They crept toward the basement the source of the live stream's broadcast with dread in their hearts. Peering down the stairs, a dim glow emanated from below. Taking a deep breath, Alex descended first with Sam close behind. What lay waiting would shatter everything they thought they knew. In the basement, multiple screens displayed a dizzying array of camera feeds, not just from inside the house, but locations all over town. The friends gaped in horror. This surveillance network had been watching their every move for who knows how long. A maniacal laugh rang out from the shadows. Surprised, I've been among you all along. The truth seeker emerged with a twisted grin, hood pulled low to obscure their face. In one hand, a taser crackled menacingly. No, Sam gasped, recognizing the voice. It can't be. But Alex knew. All the signs had been there if he cared to see beyond his own morbid curiosity. His blood ran cold as the truth seeker pushed back their hood with a sneer. Miss me? It was their reclusive neighbor. 
Mr. Harris, the man who had lived alone at the edge of town for decades. No one knew his first name or much about him at all. The perfect cover for a psychopath's lair. Why? Why are you doing this? Alex stammered weakly. Harris cackled. To show the truth, no one wanted to see. This town's secrets fueled me for years, but it was never enough. His eyes gleamed with unhinged glee. I had to make you all play the game, experience the thrill of the hunt like I have. And what a show it's been. Rage and grief welled up inside Alex. All the lives destroyed for this monster's sadistic entertainment. In a burst of adrenaline, he lunged at Harris. They crashed to the floor in a struggle, the taser skidding away. Sam grabbed for it, but Harris backhanded her hard. Alex pummeled the madman furiously. Through the haze of violence, Alex saw his opportunity. Wrenching the laptop away, he smashed it against the concrete wall in a rain of sparks. Harris howled in anguish at the destruction of his life's work. But his network was dead, the truth exposed at last. As the basement went dark, Alex's fist connected with one final cathartic blow. The storm outside began to recede as first responders finally reached the isolated town. In the aftermath, the friends began to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. Dark truths had been dragged from the shadows, but at a terrible cost. While the game was over, its scars would remain forever buried beneath the surface of Willow Creek. Jake stared up at the night sky, searching. As always, the stars provided little answers to his endless questions. What mysteries lay beyond their faint glow? What wonders or horrors existed light years away? He sighed and turned back to his computer. Another late night surfing the dark corners of the internet, hoping to find some clue that humanity was not alone. Most of what he found there were just rumors and fantasies. But every so often, something felt different, real, in a way he couldn't explain. This night, a message popped up in his inbox from an unknown sender. Strange symbols and letters he didn't recognize made up the display name. His heart leapt as he clicked to open it. Greetings, Earthling. I come from beyond your sky, beyond your dreams of other worlds. I have watched your kind for some time and wish to converse with an open and inquisitive mind such as yours. My name is Astra. I await your response in this domain if you are willing. Jake stared in disbelief, an alien contacting him directly. It had to be some prank or hoax. But what if, what if it was real? Curiosity overcame caution and he typed a reply. I'm here. Tell me of the stars. From there, a correspondence began that stretched on for weeks. Astra knew things, had experiences Jake could barely conceive of. Entire galaxies, civilizations, histories played out across her vast memories. She spoke as if from so far away as to seem almost mythical. Yet her intelligence shone through, and she seemed genuinely interested in humanity, in him. Flattered by her attention, Jake found himself opening up in return. Through her eyes, his world took on new dimensions of possibility. He began to look forward to her messages each night, living for their conversations. One evening, a new message arrived. I wish to see your world with my own senses, to meet you in truth, not just through words on a screen. Would you be willing to arrange a place we could converse face to face? Jake hesitated. What if this was all some trick or trap, but the chance to see a real alien, to prove he wasn't alone in his beliefs? was too great to pass up. Yes, he typed. Name the time and place. They agreed to meet that weekend in a remote spot high in the mountains, far from any trails or towns. As Jake drove up the winding road that night, excitement and doubt warred within. What? Or who? Would he find waiting for him? The clearing was dark and silent when he arrived. Jake switched off the engine and climbed out slowly into the chill air. 
Astra, he called softly. It's me, Jake. I'm here. Rustling came from the trees, a shadow emerging. It lowered its hood to reveal an inhuman face, large dark eyes regarding him calmly. Smooth blue-gray skin, no hair, thin lips and high cheekbones. This was no costume or trick. Jake stared, breath catching in his throat. Greetings, Jake, said Astra. I am pleased we could meet at last. Her voice held the same gentle lilt as through messages, yet now carried undertones Jake could not place. He took an involuntary step back. This was no dream or fantasy. An alien truly stood before him. His passion for discovery had led him to make first contact, for good or ill, in the vast darkness between the stars. Jake struggled to find words as Astra gazed at him serenely. I... I can't believe you're really here, he said at last. As am I, said Astra. Your world is more wondrous than I imagined. Might we converse a while, to know each other better in truth? Jake nodded, still dazed. They sat upon a fallen log as Astra began describing her home among the stars. Her people lived in vast space stations, harvesting energy from nebulae and exploring the cosmos. It sounds amazing, said Jake when she paused. He told her of Earth's simple beauty, from sweeping mountain vistas to teeming rainforests. Astra listened intently, absorbing every detail. As night deepened, Jake relaxed in her soothing presence. Her knowledge enthralled him, weaving fantasies of visiting her world. When had he last felt so at peace, so understood? Yet something nagged at the back of his mind. Astra's eyes, for all their calm, seemed to pierce straight through him, as if reading his every thought, learning all his hopes and fears. You must be tired, said Astra gently when he shivered. Stay and rest here in safety. I wish only to learn from you. Jake hesitated, but the mountain air was bitter and returning alone in darkness seemed foolish. All right, but just for the night. He rolled out his sleeping bag while Astra watched, unblinking. Her stillness unsettled him more each moment, yet he was loath to offend his guest. Exhaustion took him swiftly as he lay down. Jake awoke to dawn's pale light. Rolling over, he froze to find Astra beside him, studying his face intently. You seemed troubled in sleep, she said. I sought only to understand. He scrambled back, heart pounding. Please, give me space. Astra inclined her head. Forgive me. I forget your kind values privacy. Slowly, Jake relaxed, reassured by her calm tone. Parting was bittersweet. Astra promised to contact him again soon through messages. But as Jake drove away, doubts swirled thicker. What was her true purpose in reaching out to him? What more had she gleaned during their long talks and time alone? In the following days, Jake threw himself back into work and hobbies, trying to forget his encounter. Yet small changes nagged at him. He snapped more easily at trivial things, slept fitfully, lost focus. Friends noticed his distraction, asked what troubled him. But how could he explain meeting an alien without seeming mad? He deflected their questions, withdrawing further. Only Astra understood him fully now, or so he told himself, grasping for normalcy. Her messages, when they came, offered oasis from his turmoil. Astra seemed genuinely concerned for his well-being, easing his worries with her calm eloquence. Soon, he looked forward to them more than anything. One evening, a new message arrived. I find myself longing for the beauty of your mountains. Might you show me more of your world's wonders, far from prying eyes? We could travel somewhere remote for a time. Just the two of us. What say you, my friend? Jake stared at the screen, heart in his throat. To get away from everything with Astra did sound tempting, but a small, panicked voice warned of the risks. What did she truly want from him, from humanity? He had to know, before it was too late. 
before he was in too deep under her influence, lost to her designs. Jake steeled himself to respond, hoping it wasn't already too late to unravel the truth of Astra's agenda, and his role in whatever game she was playing with Earth's future. The night sky was clear and filled with stars as Dr. Amelia Watts peered through the lens of her telescope. From her isolated observatory, high in the mountains, she had an unobstructed view of the heavens. It was the perfect location for her work as a renowned astronomer, allowing her to study the cosmos undisturbed. Tonight, Amelia was observing a distant nebula, taking notes on its swirling gases and patterns of light. But as she adjusted the focus, strange static began interfering with the image. At first, she thought it was a malfunction and checked the telescope's components to no avail. The static only grew louder, an irritating buzz that drowned out the nebula. Frowning, Amelia switched to another part of the sky, hoping for clearer skies. Yet the static persisted, an incessant crackle that seemed to come from within the lens itself. Now curious, she adjusted the magnification higher, peering closely at the disturbance. That's when she noticed it, faint traces of a repeating code hidden within the noise. It was a sequence of short and long bursts that appeared deliberately arranged. Amelia's eyes widened as she realized this was no ordinary malfunction. Someone or something was transmitting a message directly into her telescope, but who and to what purpose? Over the next few nights, the strange signal continued without fail. Amelia began recording the transmissions, isolating the coded patterns from the static. It was a complex arrangement that seemed to defy random chance. As she analyzed the repetitions, Amelia started to detect the faintest outlines of an underlying structure. If this was a message, there had to be a way to decode it. She dedicated her evenings to puzzling over the transmissions, searching for clues in the ebb and flow of short and long bursts. Slowly, ever so slowly, she began to discern vague patterns emerging from the chaos. There were similarities to codes humans had developed, yet with subtle differences that hinted at an alien mind. After a grueling month spent immersed in her work, Amelia at last noticed a repeated three-burst sequence that occurred more often than chance. Could this be a starting point? She experimented with assigning numeric values to the short and long signals, then applying those values to the three-burst pattern. To her astonishment, it began to resolve into something recognizable. Taking pains over each tiny breakthrough, Amelia gradually assembled pieces of a complex language encoded in numbers. The messages were short, frustratingly vague. But one phrase stood out clearly, a chilling warning about unseen forces manipulating the world through the dark corners of technology. A cold shiver ran down Amelia's spine as she considered the implications. Someone or something was transmitting a coded message directly into her telescope with an apparent goal of communication. But what did they want? And how were they even able to target her so precisely? In the coming nights, Amelia redoubled her efforts to decipher more of the alien language. Yet she could not shake an unsettled feeling that had taken root in her mind. The transmitters seemed intimately aware of her work, and their cryptic warnings hinted at powers beyond human understanding, lurking where she least expected them. As Amelia delved ever deeper into the signal's meaning, she sensed unseen eyes watching her every move. Shadows seemed to lurk just out of sight inside her empty observatory. When strange files went missing from her computer without explanation, a chill of fear traced her nerves. It seemed her efforts had attracted unwanted attention from forces she did not wish to meet. But the mystery had seized her imagination, and Amelia could not stop now. She had to know the transmitter's purpose, no matter the cost. And so work continued under the watchful night sky, with an unseen threat closing in at the edges of her perception. Little did Amelia realize how close she was to prizing open a door to a realm beyond any human comprehension. Amelia rubbed her tired eyes as dawn's first light filtered through the observatory windows. 
Another long night spent struggling to untangle the alien messages had left her drained yet restless. Clutching a mug of strong coffee, she booted up her computer to review her notes once more. Perhaps a fresh perspective would reveal something new. As the files loaded, Amelia noticed a subtle glitch in one document. A single character had changed from the previous night. She frowned and reloaded the file, only to see the anomaly persist. Someone or something was altering her work remotely, taunting her with its invisible presence. A chill ran down her spine at the implications. The transmitters were not just observing. They were actively interfering now. Had Amelia pried too far into secrets not meant for human eyes? A sense of unseen menace pressed down, as if dark forces lurked just out of sight, waiting to strike. She fought back a surge of panic, reminding herself that fear would not solve this mystery. Resolving to push on despite the risks, Amelia dove back into her translations. One phrase continued to elude her meaning, frustrating her attempts to decipher its full message. It was the key to understanding the transmitter's purpose, she felt. If she could just unravel its layers of encoded meaning. As the sun rose higher, a breakthrough suddenly struck that sent a shock through her mind. The phrase was not a message at all, but a name. The name of the entity transmitting the signals. And the signals themselves were not meant as communication, but as a warning. A cold horror gripped Amelia as she realized her work had inadvertently pried open the smallest crack in the barrier between realms. Something ancient and terrible had sensed her efforts and was now using the signals to gain purchase in this world. She had to shut the door, but how? And having been detected, that same entity would surely stop at nothing to cross over fully before she could act. Amelia scrambled to back up her files to an encrypted drive, hoping to shield her research from prying eyes. But as she ejected the drive and tucked it into her pocket, a flicker of motion in her peripheral vision made her blood run cold. Whipping around, Amelia saw only her empty lab, yet she would swear shadows had shifted where none should be. Her heart pounded as unseen eyes watched her every move. She had to get help, had to warn someone. But who would believe such an incredible tale? As Amelia fled the observatory into the rising sun, she sensed a looming presence stalking just out of sight through the mountains. Driving recklessly down the winding roads, Amelia tried to calm her frayed nerves. Reaching for her phone to call the university, she found the battery drained to nothing. Another subtle manipulation by the entity pursuing her. She was completely alone in this, cut off from the outside world. Up ahead, a massive boulder had rolled into the middle of the road, blocking her path. Slamming on the brakes, Amelia skidded to a halt mere feet from the obstacle. How had such a large rock moved of its own accord? She put the car in reverse, intending to turn around. But the engine sputtered and died. Stranded with no means of escape or calling for help, panic rose like a tide within her. The entity was hurting its prey, cutting off every avenue of flight. Amelia grabbed her encrypted drive and bolted from the vehicle into the dense forest lining the roadside. She had to keep moving, had to warn someone of the danger pursuing her through these remote mountains. Crashing through the undergrowth, she sensed more than saw a looming presence sweeping through the trees in pursuit. Branches snapped and shadows shifted just beyond her vision as the entity closed in for the kill. With lungs burning and legs aching, Amelia burst from the tree line onto a sheer cliff overlooking the valley far below. She had reached a dead end with no way forward or back. Slowly turning to face her pursuer, Amelia saw only the empty forest behind. Then, from the corner of her eye, she spotted a subtle rippling in reality itself. The barrier was failing, and through the tears she glimpsed a hellish vision of humanity's digital fate that would be if that entity manifested fully. A nightmarish form was taking shape, drawing strength from every dark corner of the internet. It knew she had seen too much, had come too close to shutting the door, as the rippling coalesced into a towering shadow with more than two dimensions, 
Amelia realized with dread that she was out of time. Her discovery had unleashed a cosmic horror that would stop at nothing to cross over before the portal closed. Clutching the encrypted drive, she stood her ground against the entity's full might, prepared to fight to her last breath for the soul of her world.